Thanks a lot for stopping by. Always great to have this guy back. He's the author of Inconvenient Facts. He's a geologist. He's a really smart dude. It's Gregory Wrightstone. Greg, how are you? Oh, really good to be back on with you. Loving it. Yeah, you know, really good to have you back on. We have been talking about you and I and, and with the audience for a long time now, how the left is trying to sneak the Green New Deal in on just about everything. It, it could be some COVID relief bill and there's Green New Deal stuff in it. It could be transportation bill, there's Green New Deal stuff. Well, now there's this infrastructure bill. And, and uh, Gregory, from what I understand, infrastructure is like airports and roads and bridges and highways. And somehow... They're getting a bunch of greeny weeny New Deal stuff in here. Tell me what you found out. You know way more about this than I do. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna read off my cheat sheet here. There's okay. a lot more than just you know. You and I we think roads and bridges. That's infrastructure. And yeah. you know we pro- you probably agree with me. Their basic role of federal government might be infrastructure, roads and bridges, and yes. national defense. Yes. But they're throwing in a bunch of this other stuff and calling it redefining infrastructure. And I'm gonna read off what I've got here. Sure. Right now, it, they, it's really not been defined. They've got $174 billion for half a million electric vehicle charging stations across the country, okay. $50 billion for climate resiliency infrastructure. I'm sorry, what, what is that? What in the world is that? <laughs> now, what would you, I don't know. What would you assume that is? If you, if, you, if you had a gun to your head and you had to say what that is, what is that? I'm, I, I've been... I don't know. Yeah, in, in, my te- in, my tease, in my huh? tease for our interview today, I said it's vague. We don't know what this stuff means, what? but we're going to do our best to figure it out. So those who are watching and listening, as much as you're an expert, and that's why I keep having you on, if you can't figure it out, what are we supposed to do? And this is a bunch of our money going to it? Exactly. I, it, it gives them a, a wide uh, a bandwidth that they can throw money at just about anything they decide that meets the term climate resiliency infrastructure. That might be, who knows, but it would probably be in a, in a blue state uh, and probably benefiting one of the blue state governors, if I had to guess. There's $100 billion toward a carbon neutral grid, and I'm assuming that's going to be extending the electricity grid system to pick up these far-flung I mean, they're, they're planning solar and wind infrastructure programs all over the country uh, that don't have electric grid to them. So they're going to have to hook that up. So I guess that's a throw in a bone. You know, if you drill a gas well or develop a gas field, it's up to you to get that gas to market. It's not up. But I guess if you if you put in a wind turbine farm, it's right. up to the government to, to come get it. Well, well let, uh, me, let me ask you about that. It's Gregory Wrightstone. The name of his book is Inconvenient Facts. You can go and get it at inconvenientfacts.xyz. You can go to Amazon, uh, where it was the number one book again this past week, because people really do have a hunger and a thirst to find out what's really going on, especially after what we saw here in Texas not too long ago, where we lost the electric grid. And a lot of that was because the wind farms didn't work and solar certainly doesn't work during the winter time. And then it turns out, and this will come out in the wash, that they were actually doing rolling brownouts and blackouts and they shut off the power to one of the gas stations, uh, exactly. which, hello. Um, so, so at the end of the day, if we're hearing more about wind, more about solar, why do you think it is that if I, if I want to deliver natural gas and I'm a natural gas company, I've got to deal with it. But suddenly the government takes care of it if it's Solyndra, which, of course, we know is a big failure. But why is it that government takes over that, that breadth of it and, and few people say anything? Because they can. They, they, yeah. I mean, why, why does government do it? Well, why don't people say anything? Uh, that's a good question. I, mean, I think we can guess why government is doing it. It's control. It's taxation. Right. It's, uh, they want to keep you know, their thumb on our – to keep us – you know. I don't, I don't know, Joe, that, it, but it's happening, and it's happening in spades. We saw it in that uh, COVID relief bill where right. they threw billions and billions of dollars uh, again at other green infrastructure programs. There's, there's $98 billion, almost, a, almost $100 billion for clean energy manufacturing. I think I know what that is. That's subsidies for solar panel manufacturers and for wind turbine companies to construct these things uh, again what other industry gets this kind of 100 billion dollars of funding to just throw money at a at, a, at, a, at an industry well i mentioned uh, cylindra a little while ago isn't that what we tried to do with the obama administration cylindra was what three four five hundred million dollars that were just thrown away oh absolutely and the uh the the onapal solar plant 
that was out in Nevada, yeah. the most extensive solar plant where they were using molten sulfur and all these all these array of mirrors that focused this high temperature on it. Yeah. Uh, it went belly up here last year as well. And that was the most famous large scale solar project there was. Well, there's another $35 billion for climate technology R&D. Now, okay, I get that. We're going to throw more money at companies so they can come up with pie-in-the-sky uh, green energy technology that will be unaffordable. And it's uh, it'll be more just government grants to climate science, and we know what that does. They fund everything, whatever you do, uh, it's got to support the idea of a catastrophic man-made warming and if you're gonna if you're gonna research something that might dispute that, and there's a lot of it, you think you're gonna get any funding out of this bit? Nope, not one bit. And I just, in fact, I just had a conversation this afternoon, uh, driving from Pittsburgh to Arlington here with a professor, uh, longtime climate professor. He said I've been teaching for since 1978. He says I'm done. I'm through. I'm out. Wow. Because they've been just attacking him, and it's it's just he's he's beat up. Uh, and it, it, we get these, what I would call the climate realists. Um, that's what we see time and time again in, in, in uh, academia. They've been just overtaken by by this. They need their funding. And if you, you're not going to get your funding unless you're doing something in support of catastrophic man-made warming. I, 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 know, I know that you're not a politician. And it's Gregory Wrightstone, inconvenientfacts.xyz. So maybe you don't want to answer this. But when Republicans or conservatives are those who are realists when it comes to climate, those who understand that you are giving us the truth in your book, Inconvenient Facts, um, do they do enough? When they had control, the House, the Senate, the, the presidency, did they do enough to dispel this garbage? They're all called names. You're called names all the time. So am I. So is that professor. But at least we're, we're telling the truth and we can back it up. Uh, did, did they do enough when they had power? Because you see the Democrats get in there and they're going nuts. It's going to be a trillion dollars they're going to spend on all this climate garbage. And you and I can't even figure out what most of it is. Yeah, it, it's no. They Did they not do enough? No, they did in fact, I just had that conversation today with Dr. Will Happer, who's the chairman. He's our chair for the CO2 coalition. Right. And he talked how disappointed he was in the Trump administration. He was at the EPA, and he was just so disappointed that he couldn't get these Republicans. Uh, they fought him when he tried to get realism and real facts and science in there. Um and it's just been it's it's it, it's really bad. It's it's very very disappointing that we don't have more GOP. Most of the GOP say, well, yeah, there's a climate crisis, but we can't bankrupt our nation to solve it. Well, I'm sorry, you you spend one penny or trillions of dollars. It's it's wasteful spending that's yes. pursuing a solution in search of a problem because there is no climate crisis. Carbon dioxide dioxide is the miracle molecule. It's not the demon molecule. It's very beneficial, and that's that's what we at the CO2 Coalition really promote. Is it is. And, and it's great work that you do. It's Gregory Wright Stone. His book is called Inconvenient Facts. Inconvenientfacts.xyz is the website, or go to Amazon, go and get this book. Every time you come on, the book jumps, but it was jumping this week anyway. So people are getting word of what they're trying to do with this administration. Uh, let me let me make it a, a very, very basic, like I am. I'm a basic guy. You're, you're really smart. I'm kind of dumb. So let's say I'm sitting at dinner at Easter, and somebody says, you know, we're all going to be dead in 12 years because of the climate. AOC said so. What is the best first answer to somebody who's a climate alarmist who is in your circle and won't just drop it and just enjoy some television? What, what, what's the first best answer to to knock them off the rails and say, hey, maybe you should educate yourself. You're wrong about this. Well, I, I think that people, people think that we have too much CO2, and in reality, we're actually CO2 impoverished. We're, we have a little over 400 parts per million today. The average throughout Earth's history has been 2,600 parts per million, wow. six and a half times what it is today. Um, and, and, and that's really plants are suffering from this low CO2 level and that we can, the more CO2 we have, the faster and, and more bulky, larger plants grow. And we're, we're expanding crop growth forests are, are becoming, uh, growing faster and the deserts are, are shrinking and we're growing. Some of these areas are lush grasslands now that used to be desert because of the combination of modest warming. Right. 
and increasing CO2. Well, so what, CO2 what a great is, answer, is though. Huge. I mean, we need CO2. Look, everybody learned that in school, that plants take the CO2, they give us the oxygen. It's sort of a great marriage. Um, at, at what point do we decide in society, and I'm talking about the elite here, that we need less CO2, which is the lifeblood of our plant system? I think whenever they decided that they could use this as a cudgel to beat up, and I get, I'm, I'm sighing here because I don't know, I, I don't know the answer to some of this, why they're doing it. And right. that, I'm asked that a lot, Joe. You know, why are they, well, well, you're telling us this and why are they lying to us? Is it power? Is it control? Is it taxation? Uh, probably yes still, to all of that, probably. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think the biggest danger is that there, there are some groups that just want to destroy Western civilization, and the capitalist system. And boy, if you're going to do that, you need to go after energy. And how, you know what, how much how much hate do you get though, Greg? I, I've got to ask you that because you are literally the author of a book that is filled with facts, and you open the book and you can research it and you get all the facts you want. And the power structure out there cannot stand facts because then they can't set what the truth is. The narrative that they have is this is the truth. Don't listen to Wrightstone. Yeah, well, you'll you'll get a kick out of this. As you know, we had the Norwegian language version was published a few months ago. Yes. They did a fundraising campaign, raised a bunch of money. Their goal was to get it in every library across Norway. Uh, they just changed this up. Now they're going to deliver a copy of my book to every mayor of every town and village across Norway and then ask them to give it to their local library. Well, this created a firestorm. And Friday, two of the top politicians in Norway had an open letter, uh, very critical of me and the book. Uh, so I've, we're hoping to get my rebuttal uh, in these same papers uh, in Norway, hopefully in the next few days. So when, when, uh, they, when they go after, when, across, when they go after you, like, continents. No, no, and I appreciate that when you get something like that happen, do they come at you with facts or do they say he must be wrong? Everybody else says he is. I mean, how do they, how do they go after the facts that you, that you, that you give them? Oh, well, they, they called me a, uh, I'm, I'm an oil shill. They said that the book was, a, <laughs> was a, a combination of, of Wrightstone you know, the oil shill writes down with Heartland Institute. Well, I'm, I have nothing to do with Heartland Institute. Wow. They're a good group, and, I'm, and I'd be proud if I did, but I'm not. Um, that, they, they mentioned that two or three times in this, in this attack piece, just made up stuff. Um, but, you know, that's fine. And what I'll do is I'll turn it on them, and I'll use it to get my point. Of, they're gonna, these papers in Norway that published this, Several big papers in Norway published this letter. Well, they're now they're committed. They have to publish my rebuttal. Awesome. And so I would not have been able to get this, the truth and the facts out there if they hadn't first published this other letter. So there so, you go. The, the, yeah. the irony is they attack you and now you have an opportunity that you would not have had. That's right. That's right. And the good news too, our smartphone app is back up and available. So that's uh, inconvenient facts at the Google play or the, uh, um, the App Store and iOS. Apps. Mm -hmm. All right, brother. Listen, I appreciate you making this happen. I know you had to jump through some hoops to make it happen today. Inconvenientfacts.xyz. Inconvenient Facts is the name of the uh, the book. Go and get it at Amazon. It's Gregory Wrightstone. He, he's an amazing guy who actually took the time to write something that they knew would be attacked by people globally. But we have to have some sort of a vehicle and vessel to the truth. And this is the guy. Greg, thanks a million.